Hey guys and welcome to another new series. In this one we're going to be looking at Automation, the Car Company Tycoon game. I've seen a couple things on it, it looks pretty interesting. Uh, I've been given this game a while back, never really touched it, but I'm going to try it now. Um, essentially what you're doing is you're, you're starting as a car auto, automaker and you're essentially simulating your way through to try and see what kind of cars you can make, if you can be successful or not. So it, it is still a work in progress. Um, so what what uh, what's going on here um, is there's, they're still communicating with the community back and forth to get updates and see what they can do to fix it. So not everything is available to us, but most of the features are. So we're gonna try this and we're gonna give it a go. Um, we're definitely um, gonna start in the one of the areas that's over here just because you start lit earlier in the game and things are unlocked for you and it's just a little bit easier so we'll probably pick this country here and um, I have to think of a name let's just do bean motor cars we can be BMC and then we're just gonna start with medium we don't want to get too crazy um, essentially from what I've seen is this is kind of like um, like a bias that your company is just a little bit better with in these areas so zero is equal but that's towards the hard end and you have, supposedly have a lot of um, competition out there um, and you start with 2 billion, competition is about 65%, and uh, yeah, we're going to give this a go. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff going on in this game. Um, I mean, if you want to look at the, the markets here, it's just so much. Like, this is your, your sales demand right now, and obviously because we don't have a car, there's no demand. But then it's just like, okay, well, what is the uh, demographic size now, right? So you can see the, the number here bigger that number the more people there are to purchase those cars and this is the estimated increase percentage below it so obviously if you're gonna go for like a premium muscle car you're not gonna have the same demographic for say a utility car or a, um, a budget car that's what they mean with the B so I think what what we're gonna start with is we will start with some f some family budget cars and maybe like a city budget car tackle those markets to make sure that we have money coming in and in the meantime while we're doing that we're going to be developing essentially items for um, mid-engine supercar because that's where we'll move the company towards or at least that's where we're going to try there's no guarantee it's going to work okay so uh, we'll start with some engine projects and I want to create two engines first first I'm going to make a Tiger engine which will be my nice little small four banger that is going to um, essentially power my family sedans or family units. And we're going to keep it square. 86 is a good place to start. We're going to do some uh, direct acting overhead cams. Cast iron because I don't have any other material. And as the game goes on and as you develop more information and more. Uh, technologies you will start to um, unlock more things to do but we're gonna start with this architecture and then we're gonna essentially jump in here and we'll start editing some of the things on the engine so we're gonna keep things cast that way they can handle a little bit more higher rpms if you wanted to do a diesel or something definitely go there your heavy duty cast but we're gonna leave it just as that is and move forward here Compression ratio to start has to be really low until you start developing further technology to avoid knock. So we're going to start at 7. We're going to leave the cam profile where it is. We got no variable valve timing available to us. So we'll move over. I was told that turbochargers and superchargers type of things are locked later on in the game. But we don't have anything to really deal with here. And But I'm, I mean as soon as we get into the uh, like, uh, trying to do our supercar builds or something like that then this is definitely where we're going to start playing a lot more too to get that huge power numbers out. Um, okay, so 
Now we're just going to keep things simple. Single barrel, single carburetor. And we're going to stick with a standard intake. We want to target low quality fuel. And the reason I'm going to say target low quality fuel is that um, it gives more opportunity for the budget buyers to use different types of fuel. So um, it essentially allows them to use all three, whatever their budgets are. But if we said only super leaded, then uh, we run into issues where now it's going to close down our market. So we're going to keep things fairly simple. Um, the ignition timing. We'll probably just start at 25 degrees. Keeps our uh, RPM peak power, they're saying around 1500 RPM. So I'll leave it at that. I'll leave the fuel mixture here right now. Um, we'll see in a second. I'm going to drop the RPM limit to about 5200. Go into the exhaust. And you'll see too, as you pick different things, it does. Um, create it in right in front of you which it's got an quite a bit of amount of detail here that you can see right like it's got all this stuff moving around you can take turn them on and off whatever you don't want to see don't have a turbo so you can't see that take the headers off you don't have to see them if you don't want to take the rocker valve off the rocker covers and you get to see everything moving around inside it's pretty cool I mean, even the detail on the cast block is pretty nuts. So really, if cars are your thing, definitely look at Steam. Check this one out. See if this is a game for you. We'll just back out of there and we'll get back into what we're doing. We're not going to mess with too much to start. We're just going to try and keep costs down if we can, engineering time down if we can. Um, we're going to keep it baffled on both just to keep our noise rating down. Where is that noise rating? Yes, so 32, so that way we keep it down. And now you can see here that this is probably the least powerful engine you'll ever see that's a two liter four banger. Um, so, but yeah, we'll start, uh, we'll start playing with some of the things now to try and fix that. So you can see that we're, we're knocking like crazy. But that's because, mostly because we're doing that low fuel, right? If we picked a different fuel, you can see the, the difference already. Where we're picking up to about 60 horsepower engine here, 65 ish. So, I mean, for 1946 is the year that we're starting. Not terrible. Um, but we do want to keep the target there for this low fuel quality. So, now we pretty much just start seeing what we can do that's going to help us. It doesn't seem like the cam profile is going to help us any much, any bit. So we'll leave that at the 40 that I was at. We'll start knocking down the compression ratio. No, that's not going to help us. At least it, it will, but it's not right now in what it's showing. We're going to leave that the same. Uh, what do we got to go with here? Mission timing. We put it way up, doesn't help us, way down, doesn't help us. So we'll leave it at 25 for now until we find what's going to give us that difference. Let's see if we make it really rich. Okay. So if we make this sucker so rich it doesn't produce any power whatsoever, we don't knock. But then as soon as we start producing some power, we knock. So this engine's pretty much trash. What can we do to help ourselves here? Can we knock down the compression ratio even more? Okay, here we go. Now we're starting to put something together. Now we're starting to knock again. Change our timing. Starting to produce a little bit more foot pounds, a little bit more horsepower. And we get ourselves out of knocking. Pull the timing down again. Get it to about there. Okay, let's see. Can we pull it all the way out? No. Okay, so let's try and get. Okay. So, right there, it's not terrible. It says that the engine's knocking, but it, I mean, it 
doesn't tell me it is, but it says it is at the same time. So, but it wants me to also run a leaner fuel, but if I run leaner fuel, then I won't be able to get out of uh, my knock condition. So what if I try changing around? See, now I got like no, um, no performance whatsoever if I go to the singer, single barrel eco fuel system. But if I go two barrel, I still run into knocking pretty hard. Okay, single barrel. Okay, so there's a little bit of a difference. Now if I get this in there... Oh, I can only go single carb race. Okay, let's do this one here. Single barrel. Twin carb. Ooh. No, I didn't want to do that. Not a hundred. We'll leave it at five and... Okay, well that's way too rich. Okay. It seems like it's going to be happy there. And I think we can just... We've got no warnings. Not the most terribly amazing engine. But, I mean, for the 1940s, it's probably not a terrible engine for the technology that's available to you at that day. Especially uh, going with the low quality fuel. If we bump that fuel up, that'd be great. But then we'll start missing some target markets as far as being the budget so essentially right here we just wanted to make sure our engineering time is on the lower end if we started using these guys here we won't be able to um, run very high and we'll end up with conrod in other words your connecting rod or your piston issues top end oh, can we start playing with this a little bit uh, i think we're running into valve float engine knocking again Okay, so we'll we'll keep it here around a normal cam profile. Maybe we'll play with that later. Uh, turbo, we're not doing anything. Fuel, single barrel. And now the only downside that we got going for us right here is we go with a twin carburetor, which is essentially 0.1 of a month. Or actually, sorry, it's um, three months more engineering time. Production is pretty much the same. Material cost is almost double. And the weight is a little bit more, but the max power is there. So we'll go with all of this uh, just to start off with this engine. Not going to change too much here. Keep all that the same. And now that runs us into testing, which now is when you can kind of see where your problems are starting or where they're not. And then you can try and adjust things, but we're probably not going to adjust anything. We'll just run with, with what we have here. But we'll just run it through its paces so you can see that the headers start to uh, start to reduce their flow here so if we wanted to add more power we could open up the exhaust maybe a little bit for the upper end well the exhaust is actually fine sorry we'd have to change the header from the cast log which we're not going to do so we don't want to incur more costs we want to try and keep our costs as far low as far down as far low as we can. So that is going to be the first variant of our engine. So we'll call that Mark One of the Tiger. And it's gonna be our Tiger Eco. It'll be our Tiger Eco engine. And that one is then set. Okay, so. Now they want a factory configure configuration. So this is where I'm not entirely great with the game just yet because I'm still trying to learn it, but we'll try and get through this together. Um, essentially variant one, it's going to be building our Mark one Tiger engine here. Um, and we essentially, I think I'm just going to leave everything as is. So I'm not sure what everything is looking at just yet. But we'll learn it together. So we'll sign off on this factory. Okay. So now what we do want to do though. 
is is the tiger eco project is is there so we've done that project but we want to create another engine project i uh, don't want to get into facelifts no okay where do we go for another engine project go back out here add a new engine project okay and this is going to be our performance line Which this is when we get to have a little bit more fun. We're going to go for the V6 because... Or sorry, the V60 degree because we get to have a V12. Which is definitely where I want to be. And I'm going to leave it the same 86 to 86. Don't want to play with that too much. Keep it square. And we're going to go now for a 6 liter engine instead of a 2 liter. Again, we're going to go with a direct acting overhead cams. I don't want to have too much time in the engineering department. And kind of the... The hope would be that as I get the one engine out or get this engine out, it's going to give me a little bit less engineering time for either of these two guys and I'll be able to do a facelift or a next generation on this engine with uh, an, a, a new head or a new head variant. So we'll leave it here, cast iron, no variable valve lift, we'll leave it as is there and we'll move on to uh, getting through the next set. So again, everything's cast. Moving forward, we're going to leave this compression ratio around 8. And we're going to start there for this guy. We're going to move the, the cam profile more towards a sporty race. So we're going to start at 75. And then we're going to move on to the next setting, which is the gas. And now this is where we can go two barrels, triple carburetor. We're just kind of just, just shooting some stuff in the dark right now. Definitely towards performance end. Can at least start with just the regular leaded so that way we have the choice between regular or super but we're going to definitely have this engine stay away from our low qualities we'll leave this stuff here for now uh, we'll just get into the exhaust which i think we'll just do with some short cast heads here definitely go dual exhaust don't want to baffle it you want to hear all of that uh engine roar and and fun that's going to come with it so right now, it's not terrible. Gotten some half decent power for the 40s, but it is also a V12. So you're kind of thinking, now oh, you should get more, but we do have some knocking issues here. Um, we can see where that's going to be at if it's going to be the whole time. So the intake starts to. Uh, reduce our power on the flow bench so we might be able to deal with that change some cam profiles there okay let's try doing that and see what we can do here put a little bit more towards the racy end of it So we're definitely getting rid of the flow bench issue. Let's try a couple more here to go up to 83. But we're starting to get to the upper end. Like you can see up here, just the, the issues we're having. So you can see through here, once we start getting into the RPMs around 5600, and over we start picking up some piston and connecting rod issues and that's mostly just going to be from the force that's going on and that's just the material that we have available to us so we want to um, essentially go in here and just turn down the rev limiter to 5500 and then with that we're probably going to back the cam profile out a little bit we'll go back down to 80 and now as far as the fuel system we can try throwing it a bit more rich a bit more retarded timing to get out of the knock. Actually, we're going to advance the timing. Do the opposite. And pull fuel out. So we can make it a little bit more rich to get us out of the issues. But we're going to advance our timing. And try and give ourselves some more power. So that's not too bad. 
300 foot pounds, 300 horsepower engine out of the 40s. V12. I think we're going to start there for this particular engine. I don't know if we want to start changing anything too much. Yeah, it kind of seems like the exhaust diameter is hot. Pretty good right there. I mean, I can always put some of this stuff in it here. But we're just going to get the car out there first and see if we can get a name for it before we start uh, um, going crazy on costs. So, right now, 300 horsepower, 300 foot-pound torque engine, 6 liter V12. We'll go with that. Definitely it's going to be the premium brand that people are going to have to uh, go for on this one. So now I need to um, go and look at the factories again. I should have two engines now. Performance Mark 1, and we're going to call it the Monster. That's going to be our engine line. Okay, so now we want to edit. Do we want to edit this factory? I didn't think so. No, we want to leave that alone. How to remove projects from factory. Engine factory one. Okay, so now how do I do that? I want to add... Yeah, I want that one in there. But now where's my other engine? We'll send off in that factory again. Tiger Eco, yeah. I don't know why I'm back into this guy. Yeah, it looks great. Okay, but now what about this project? I need to give this project a factory. Oh, it's making a new factory. I wanted to try and see if I can build it all in the same factory. Select a region to build in. I want to build in that region. Hmm. Tiny spot. Yeah, it is just a... Um, engine factory. We'll start with a tiny plot to make my engine factory. I can't do any of these here. I'll have to buy more land. Ooh. You know what? Maybe we'll just go with the small instead. Can I get... Oh, I guess I can't do any of these facilities because it's a work in progress. But, uh, we'll go with the small factory. And we'll... Throw a CNC workshop in there. You know what, let's throw all of those workshops in there because this is going to be our pinnacle engine factory. Okay, sign off on that factory. So now i got two factories doing that. So i got two different factories making two different engines. Tiger Eco in order to lock or remove it from the list of factories. No, I don't want to um, stop the Tiger Eco. Now, this is production cost per item. Like, So you can see that it's, it's essentially $1,000 for that engine. And this one now is $2,300 for that engine. And it's going to take significantly longer to develop as well. Okay. So we're going to move forward with this. Sign off. Sign off on this one, and sign off on this project. Okay, so now they're both signed off, and they're going to be going um, once um, I start running time, which I don't even know where to do that yet. Um, okay, so i got engine projects. Now I need to make two different cars. But I think I'm going to look at the research and technology first. We want to do engine, everything engine. Body will work out later, but we're going to start with everything engine first. 
lab costs. You know, let's try and just jump the engine way up there. We'll spend nine hundred thousand dollars on that. I don't know how long it's going to take to develop everything, but we're going to push for it. But I do need to do safety as well at some point, um, just because to get into some of the different markets, I'm going to have to start making some safety items. So now this is where I get to create a actual car. So now this one, what should we name? It. I think the Mondello. We'll do the Mondello because it's a mundane, boring car. Because that's what we have to do to start. Just to get the, the money rolling in. Once it'll load up some of the body styles here, we'll be able to go through and we'll pick one that we want to stick with. Or start with. Okay. I'm thinking that we're gonna start somewhere down here. This will be for our, um, oh no, maybe it won't be because it's only front engine and I wanna try and keep it a mid engine if I can. So I have to find one that can do mid engine. Like this car here can eventually do a mid, front, mid or rear. So we might do that one for our, our, our supercar to start that will come out after. But to start, we just want to keep into, I guess this one can do a front, mid, or rear as well, but kind of boring looking, so we'll stay away from that one, at least for our supercar. But we're going to start with this one for our mundane normal car. Okay, so now this is when we start making our different chassis decisions. Um, I don't want to get into the aluminum. I'm not familiar with it. You can see it's 0%, engineering time's high. This costs a lot to produce. Its weight is really good, but the, I mean, it's just, it's not great to start off with. The supercars, eventually we're gonna get into that. Maybe we'll make the special, our supercar out of that, but this guy, we're gonna be starting with steel. Could go with a ladder frame here, but uh, that one is, you can just see, doubles the engineering time. It saves weight, but it's way much more production units. And then um, everything else is kind of a green. Safety is really good. Corrosion is pretty much the same. But we're going to stick with the ladder because it's cheap and easy. Um, looks like I need a galvanization plant. So we're not going to go with that. Cannot be produced. So I'm going to stick with the steel. This is the front longitudinal um, setup. We're going to stick with that one. We're going to go with... A, I think a solid axle coil. Actually, if I'm gonna make it as cheap as possible, let's do a solid axle leaf in the front, and solid axle leaf in the back. Like you are, you're running a Jeep here, pretty much. Wishbones look pretty cool, but you're gonna be running a Jeep pretty much here. Jeep setup. Well, almost a Jeep. Jeep doesn't really have the leaf, but that's okay. So that's going to be our chassis setup, and we're going to go with that. So now that we have that there, now we have to select an engine. So we're going to select one of our existing engines, and we don't want to give it the monster. We want to give it the Mark I Tiger Eco. So we'll select this variant, which then means now it has our engine added into it, our nice little four banger there, ready to put out that power. And now we get to go through um, the trim slot. Okay, so we're gonna try and edit through the trim here. And now we get to choose what body we wanna do. Do we wanna throw a convertible on there? I think we're just gonna stick with the sedan for now. Start with that body, seems to be fairly simple. We can make some adjustments to it though if we want. Like we can adjust the hood, all funny. Like we can push it way down if we want. That way it looks like it's a little bit more profiled. You give it a little butt nose if you want. Just push that sucker way out there. We're going to keep it somewhat sleek. Sleek and forward. Gives it a little bit more of like an aggressive forward stance if it can. 
can pull the fenders way out, but I'm going to leave them in. It's going to turn the front up a little bit and move the back out a little bit more. I mean, that looks really dumb. Actually, it's impossible to do that if you want to have a drop window there. But uh, we'll run with that just to try and give the rear passengers a little bit more headroom. And we're going to give them some more trunk room. Make that nice big tuchus there. Nice big bum on the car. Because uh, a little bit more trunk room. That way they, they can go on family vacations and not complain. So I think this is going to be our size. We can adjust this guy here too. In and out. Um, we'll push it all the way in to start. It kind of matches this a little bit in size, so we'll leave that there. Make sure our fenders are squished in. You can pull the rear fenders out too, which, I mean, if we wanted to make a hot rod, but we're just keeping it all nice, tight, and, and simple for now. Now we move on to the paint. So we'll, we'll pick a color that we'd like um, on the car. And you like to do, um, yeah, let's see. Do we want to have it a red, flake, none, or high, medium, or low shine? Do you want a matte finish? I mean, we could throw out there and just put it as a murder car. Flat black, no flake. Ooh, we could give it a chrome finish. That'd be kind of cool. Very flashy, but we're going to stick with paint. I think if we give it a nice, um, nice little blue here, maybe a little bit deeper. Mm. No. no, it doesn't really have that really nice blue. Don't want to get purple either. Like that's just a little too blue, I think. Uh... That's a little bit better, having the high flake. High flake, high shine. Except for, does this have any impact on... We'll call this Midnight Blue. Give that one a Midnight Blue. And, uh... Let's see. Yeah, that's a different issue. Just finish editing paint. Midnight Blue. So now we should be able to pick this for any other cars that we want and throw that on there. So now we get to go and do some more customization and throw in some different features. So I'm going to start with a headlight. We're going to take the year down to just to the essentially 40s, 50s. Kind of tells us where, which ones we should go for. I'm kind of thinking of a round light. Ooh, have them as... Ooh, that's kind of weird. Oh, it's freaking out. Oh, it won't let me put them on the roof. No, I'm, I'm not looking for that. I'm kind of thinking of having it sculpted into the body a little more. We'll put those ones there. These ones have to go. No, see that looks dumb. We don't want those headlights. Let's try these guys here. No, so that's gonna look dumb too. No. Okay. Where do we want to be? Let's try this one here. Uh, no, I kind of want them to try and like follow the fender. And I don't think that's quite going to happen. Not the way that I want them to. Oh, there we go. That's a little bit better. This it looks like it is. Let's have a look at this now. Yeah, see that looks better. It kind of looks like it's meant to be there. Yeah, I like that more. Primary, bonnet, window tint. No, we want to have the primary color. How do we want the glass to look? Oh, we could give it yellow headlights. Red, no. 
Chrome. I'm thinking either the glass or the yellow. Oh, the yellow could look really cool. But we'll stick with the glass for now. Maybe we'll change it later. Oh, that's a little bit too close to his nose. Yep, we're good there. Okay, back, all right. All right, so the next on the list is taillights. And to stick with the theme, I kind of want to keep them, still want to stay round, like these kind of lights here. I just want to kind of pop them in the back. Let's just see if we can shrink the size. Let's see what this will look like. Oh, under the floor, sorry. That's not bad. But now let's just see what can we do for the materials. Oh, but I think that, that triangle is kind of dumb. Yeah, no, we don't want the triangle there. Like we, yeah, we don't want that. We think I'm gonna want more something that's like a solid light and not so much LED looking. I think more like just a solid light like this. But now we're just going to try and get that to the nice size. No, see I don't want him to stick out like that. No, I don't want him to stick out that weird shape. one other round guy here but it's like smiley faces looks almost I don't want that try this one again where did it go why am I not selecting it okay let's just go back try it again Oh, do I have to actually select add? Delete. I don't I don't know why it's not letting me select that now. Maybe I just won't have taillights on this car. Oh right. I always have to delete things. Always gotta remember to delete. I don't want them to look like that. Um that's not bad. Ooh, that could be kind of cool. The thing is they stick out, which is weird. I don't know. I don't want them to stick out like that. Oh, uh, what tail lights? I think I'm going to go with these guys, but make them just bigger and pull them out to the side a little bit more. Yeah. Oh, wrong way. Slowly back her out. Yeah, I can deal with that. And those should be able to double as indicators or turn signals. But now we got to put turn signals on the front. Then I want to keep them simple. I'm just going to go with a round turn signal I'm just gonna pop them on the front a little bit more inside because as soon as we start putting them on the curve they start pointing up which is just kind of weird I want them to point up they have to point forward okay now we got We'll turn signals in the lower portion of the bumper. Now we look at our grills. What kind of grill do we want? Kind of like that open mouth that's there on the top left. Go with this guy. Yeah. We'll start you there. We'll make you big and tall wide like it's angry like it's coming to eat you 
Not a bad looking front end. Events. Mm, I don't think I want to do any events. Not on this car. Hood scoop, why not, right? No, not on this guy. It's gotta be cheap. No lips, no spoilers, no wings. But it's gotta have a fuel cap. But we'll put a nice fuel cap, nice round fuel cap, just on top of the rear fender. Just right there. Subtle little detail, you can't really see it, but it's there. Door handle. And we want a nice little old school looking handle. And I think that's got to be this chrome boy here. I'm going to put him right here in the door. And then we have to put obviously another handle for the rear door. Roughly the same height. And they're nice enough to put it in the same spot on the other side so it looks like it's proper. I think that's a good place for the door handles. That's not bad. And I think the chrome will match the kind of shape and style of this car. Mirror. Wing mirrors. Oh, yikes. Not a lot of options here. Okay. We'll kind of, I think we'll dive into the 60s a bit to find a more acceptable mirror. I think we got to go with the chrome on the blue. Nice little small door mirror. Or do you want to increase that size? I think we got to increase the size a bit. That's not bad. Yeah, we'll stick with those mirrors. A little bit of chrome, a little bit of blue. Yeah. Alright, so we got door mirrors in. Got a nice little antenna. No, we're going to go with essentially the straight up antenna. Put it on the back of the car. Where it belongs. Perfect. Number plates. Uh, we're going to stick with just a simple number plate in the back. going to be one of those countries that just has uh, number plates on the back. We'll just put it right under the trunk. Just like that. Perfectly centered. Nice little plate. Bumper bars. You know what? I think a bumper is going to ruin the look of this. We're going to go no bumper. Yeah, we're going to forego the bumper. We're going to go right to a badge. We're going to find ourselves a nice little badge. Oh, what should we use? Could be a nice little crest and put something on top of it. Ooh, do we want to have some guy riding a horse? Pegasus. Oh, we do have the point double wings. These are kind of cool. The owls are lame, but the other ones are kind of cool. Oh, and then these, these just instantly reminded me of Renault. I think we're going to go with this guy here, this grouping, and we're going to go with this little bird looking dude. And we're going to give it a badge right in the front. We're going to make it a bit bigger. And then we're also going to put him on the back trunk as well. And then we're going to make him nice and big. All right, don't think any more badges. Now, I don't know if I want to change the wheels from being this weird steely looking wheel. I don't know what it does for cost. Hopefully it keeps the cost still low if I change the wheels. But I mean, the wheels, I don't want to get like, like you've put like $3,000 wheels on your crappy car type of thing. I mean, I think those will do okay. Exhaust tip. Gotta put the exhaust, single exhaust, out the back. Ooh, side exit? That could be kind of cool. 
Uh, no, I think we gotta put it straight at the back. Yeah. We'll just leave it there. We'll just try and tuck it up a little bit more. Will it put it inside the bumper? Go through a little bit. Or oh, puts it like in inside the bumper. Doesn't like give it a cut out. So we'll just Oh, we could come and out the bumper. Hmm. No, that looks kinda dumb. Oh no, I can't grab it. Well, maybe this is... Oh, there it is. That's how you get her at the bumper. Yeah, I can deal with that. Just at one side. Single exhaust. Not dual. Miscellaneous features. Oh, definitely gotta put the keyholes in the doors. Key here. Gotta put the key in there. Okay, so we got one key. We're gonna have a key just above. Oh, that looks really dumb. I'm not a fan of this key. What does this one look like? It looks when that one looks even worse. Oh, I went inside. Oh, nope. Undo that. Uh, okay, there. Oh yeah, make it bigger. That's gonna help. You know what? Maybe we'll just leave the key off. Yeah, it's just, it's integrated into the handle somewhere, so just don't worry about it. Looks kind of dumb. And tow hooks, so no, yeah, we don't need to do any of that. I think that's the start of the car. At least that's how the it's going to look. We'll give it a bit of a save here. I don't think it's going to look too bad. It doesn't look too dumb yet. We'll get back into the drivetrain. Manual gearbox. It's the only option. Two ratios or three? Is that, I think three ratios will be worth the extra two months. And it's going to weigh more. Uh, no diff. Open diff. Keeps cost down. Is it complaining? Just complaining about tires. Okay. So we'll get right into tires. Cross ply, don't have any other choice. Hard, long life. Real endurancey tires. Max, max, and the front tires are narrow for the chosen tire compound and the load that they carry. Try increasing the front tire width. Okay. Tire diameter. Okay, so that got rid of our problem. Nice big meaty boys everywhere. It's going to look like an off-road racer. Alright. So now we get into brakes. Got drum. No other choice. No choices here. Size. We'll leave the size where it's at. Um, larger rear brakes is more braking power. Less braking fade, but it's Better sportiness, but it don't have to be sporty. Less weight, lower cost materials. So I can reduce the size. Because braking in the rear, you don't use much anyway. Oh, that's actually the front brakes. Okay. The front brakes will leave on the larger end of things. But the rear brakes, we're going to... Oh, they're already as small as they're going to get. Okay. Pad type. We're definitely going to move more towards the comfort setting. Better comfort, but we don't need sportiness, less brake fade. Well, don't drive it like a race car because it's not. Brake biased. We'll leave it at a 60 40. Okay, we'll move on. 
All right, under tray. We don't want an under tray. Don't need any active arrow. Cooling airflow. Let's see, if we move it too far down, we get a warning for the engine cooling factor is very low. Reduce the car's reliability, consider increasing cooling. So we'll increase the cooling just to where it gives us no issues. And brake airflow. But we'll leave it, it's not a race car. Okay, interior. All right, number of seats, three, two, five seater. Can't really put anything in the back there, but um, three plus, two plus, three plus, two or three. Okay, no, yeah, we're gonna leave it as a, a five seater, nice little family car. We could go with the bench, make it a six seater. Bench in the front, bench in the back. Let's do that. And we're gonna just keep it as, you know, base interior. I don't want to get into huge engineering time and costs and weight and all of that fun. And, okay. So we don't want... Oh. No entertainment. Sorry, guys. This can be really boring. Power steering, none. Traction aids, none. Safety. Ooh, standard 40s, advanced 40s. You know what? It doesn't have to be safe. Let's see. What is this going to give us? Okay, so it is considering seat count penalty 17%. Rear wheel drive hooligan and straight line performer with a big engine and lots of muscle. Okay. So it's saying that I'm competing as a muscle and a family utility premium or a pony car. This isn't exactly um, the, the target market I had, that's for sure. Suspension tuning. I will get into all of this stuff later, but we just want to kind of get our car out there. View engine stats. View car stats. Okay, so drivability, I don't know if that's out of 100 or what it is. Percentage difference versus five percent, thirty percent previous value. Sportiness and <laughs> it doesn't look very sporty. Comfort, prestige, material costs. It's okay, so it's it's a fairly pricey car. Maybe we can try and find some cost to pull out of it somewhere. Engineering time. It's quite a bit. Seat count penalty. So what if we went here and went this way? Material costs are down. And engineering time is down a little bit. Weight is down. And they like it in the muscle car and pony and, and pony budget. City Premium now wants it. Mm. We're going to leave it here because we're hitting, I think, some markets. Pony, we're getting at least one budget market. Wouldn't mind looking at how we can reduce some costs here. Presets. Comfy. And that wants to be an off-road competitiveness, 97. We'll just leave it as a normal tune or preset. We won't get into too much of that. What is it saying? Front brake force is low compared to grip. Consider increasing front brake size or pad type. Okay. So let's increase the pad type here. But now it's more money. 
and front brake size. We can't make that any larger. Okay. Maybe we just upgrade the rear brakes. Front brake force is low compared to grip. Cars issues with wheel spin reducing drivability. Consider adjusting gearing and tire grip or adding traction control. Let's put a little bit more brake bias to the front. Okay, so it's still too low. But for now, it's starting to make our costs too high, and I'm trying to do the opposite. I'm trying to bring the cost down. Okay, so let's look into the gear train here, and let's increase the spacing. We got lots of wheel spin in first gear. Okay, we, okay, so it's either 100%. Fifty seven per cent facing. Got lots of wheel spin there still. But why don't we increase the top speed and see if we can help with our wheel spin? Nope. Okay. So we want to try and get rid of the wheel spin if we can. Tire width. Front tires are very high profile, making them less drivable. Consider increasing rim size. Okay, so increase rim size. Rear tires are wide for the chosen tire compound and the load that they carry. Try decreasing tire width. Okay. So we're still trying to decrease front tires, very high profile, making less drivable, increasing rim size. Okay, so I increase rim size again. So it says braking issue and wheel spin. But now we can increase brake size. Let's increase the front brake size. Okay, maybe this is a front. Front brake size is low compared. The rear brake size is very high compared to grip. You don't want to do that because then we'll spin out. Brake force is low compared to grip. Consider increasing the front brake size or pad type. I don't know how much more I can do. Like the brake size is massive. It's as big as it can get. The pad type will just put through the roof now the rear brakes are really too strong. So where does it want it to be? Minor issues, okay. Where do we want to be for pad type? That's where it starts causing an issue. Now what happens if I put this here? The rear brake force is low. Okay, so the brake bias is definitely something that I need to play with. Front brake force is low, the rear brake force is low. Okay, so I can increase the, that to get rid of the rear brake. Increase its size. This makes the car so expensive though. We want to keep the brake bias this direction, like a 70 30. The 
Okay, so let's try increasing that size. See the cost? I don't like how the cost is going in the wrong direction. So I might have to find a way to get rid of that. Or that's just going to be an issue with the car. Let's just leave it as an issue with the car and see what they say. Interior, basic. I don't want any features. Nothing here. Just but testing, suspensions. Okay, so we have a four door, five seats, wheelbase is 206 meters. Like this 363, chassis, the steel ladder, steel panels, drivetrain is a front longitudinal rear wheel drive ladder, three gearbox, three gear, gearbox. Solid axle front, solid axle rear. Maybe I should look at changing that. Possibly. Suspension, weight. It's not a very heavy car, it's a pretty light car. But it's very heavy towards the front. But it's got some power to it. Maybe if I try to move some weight to the rear that might help. Seven point seven liters per hundred kilometers. Is that what the economy is there? The markets. Well, these are the markets that they say that body type penalty is ten. Low comfort penalty. Low sportiness penalty. Body type penalty. Fits that one okay. Muscles okay. Family sports okay. Family premium. Fun. I did not hit the budget car at all. Hmm. Wheel spin, steering, circle test, handling and brakes, drivetrain, and performance torque curve. They like gearbox. They don't like a lot. So why don't I try and look at seeing what I can do about the gears? Um. Want to try and decrease our wheel spin. So the spacing is something we're probably gonna have to play with to find that sweet spot of decreasing that wheel spin. We're going down, going in the right direction. Good. When it's going to start going up. Okay. This is going to help. I didn't say that before. 50% there. 37%. 29. So 18. 0. Okay, so we'll bump this up. Okay, so now we're getting wheel spin again. The 21 looks like it's our number. But now what happens when I move my top speed down? I get wheel spin. Okay, so I think these need to work together. 1.7. But see, at this point, why wouldn't I just do a two speed? Right? And then drop this top speed way down there. And I got insane wheel spin again. So I'm just go with a four gear. But see, now that's increasing cost. So if I go with a two speed gearbox. this here and there I can't get out of any more wheel spin than what I have unless I start pumping the top speed up okay so we're back into the wheel speed here wheel spin sorry 
Okay, so that looks like it's better. Saving money there. What are they saying here? Front brake force is low compared to grip. Rear brake force is low compared to grip. The short gearing is significantly reducing the car's top speed. Try increasing the top speed setting. I didn't know that they wanted to go fast. Nope, not what I wanted to do. Because then if I increase the top speed, I can then change my gear basing. Oh, now we're well into wheel spin again. Almost out of it. Okay. One more. We got the wheel spin back. Okay. What do they say about this? The short gearing significantly reducing the car's top speed. Try increasing the speed setting. Yeah, but say I don't want to. I'm, I'm, I think we're good where we're at here. Acceleration. And G. Ooh, that's a really weird kind of comes up and falls down. What do we have here? Rear grip is there and then rear engine. Not sure what it's trying to tell me on that one. Braking. From 124 kilometers per hour. Takes five seconds to stop. Hundred to zero and fifty seven point one meters. Okay, so suspension and put it into a comfy setting. Yeah, let's leave it in a comfy setting for now. Driving aids nothing. Nothing special there. Utility premium. I don't know why they think it's a premium car. I think it's pretty basic. I need to find out where all this money is at and try and pull some out. Because now we're into fun. I mean, there's. It's not like there's nobody in these markets. But it's just not the big markets, right? Front brake is low as compared to grip, short gearing, rear ride frequency is low, reducing durability, sportiness, and comfort, try increasing rear spring stiffness. So essentially they don't like a soft setting, essentially. Let's leave it then in a comfort setting. And it, can, it leaves us in the same markets. At least the competitiveness in those markets. Handling and braking. Drive chain and performance. Why is the gearbox? Because it's so tight and small. What if I go to three gears? And I just pump the top speed way up there. You know what? They want to go fast. We'll let them go fast. We'll give them three gears. We'll let them go fast. We'll keep them at a wheel speed. Or wheel spin. Actually, we'll give them a little bit. Maybe they'll like a little bit. Yeah, I think they like a little bit. Still, for some reason, the gearbox is just, they, they hate it. Suspension and wheels, they like that. Interior, chassis, fixtures, they don't care for that. Drivability. Man, they hate that though. Evasion, footprint, control. Fuel economy. Boardiness. Safety. Okay. Practicality is looking like it's fairly practical. 
You know what? This is just the first car. We'll see how this goes. They don't like the brake force still though, but not sure I can do much about it except for increasing the pad type. We'll go to 2500 as far as our max price. We won't go any more. It's low compared to grip. Okay, so we want to change the bias then. Let's see if we can get rid of that one. Yeah, we did. There we go. Okay. So. I think we're going to go with this. Okay, so the trim one is out there. We're just going to call this base. I'm just going to start with that one trim. And now it needs a factory. So. Okay. Cannot be produced. Add on steel press. So I need a steel press. So now I can make this car. Okay. I don't think I need anything else. Because it's not handmade. Okay, looks like it's okay. We'll just throw the base trim in there. And we'll get this approved. Oh, I need you to sign off on the factory first. So it's ready to sign off, looks like. Okay, so the base car is there. I think I'm going to sign off on that project. I'm assuming that's okay. Competitiveness. Margin. Is this a margin here? years. Ooh. It's going to take me 10 years to make money. Okay. And shifts. Production trims. Just the base. Wow. It's because it costs way too much. Okay, so I need to find something. Let's, I need to somehow pull cost out of this. Engineering time, portability 3%. That's not good. Okay, so now how am I going to pull some cost out of this? Forecaster. I don't even make money at all on this car anymore. I'll just lose all my money. Okay, so I definitely need to try and find. Because this is my. The sports car is the one I'm supposed to lose money on. This one's supposed to make me money, so. don't know what and an engine Let's see if I can get any money out of the engine it click to edit it it doesn't want me to edit it okay okay edit engine project Okay, so, but edit variant, it won't let me edit the variant. Why would it not let me edit the variant? Back. Car projects, back. Engine projects. Open the project. Why will it not let me edit it? 
probably because I have to go into a facelift or something because I've, right, I've already approved it. So how am I supposed to edit it if I've already approved it? That makes sense. Okay. Um, car project. I need to somehow edit this trim and see if we can pull cost out. Where would we have costs? Like, because it doesn't necessarily say that any of these features are adding cost, right? Okay, so we can pull cost out here. Or we can add more cost. Not really much that we can pull cost out of here though. Chunky off-road tires. They save a significant amount of money actually. cost where is the cost in here acceleration grip cornering maximum grip material cost the rim size very high profiles now Tire diameter, pull the tire diameter down. I think I'm just gonna have to live with some of these. That's very high profile, making it less drivable, considering increasing rim size. With wheel spin slightly reducing drivability. This should be the rear tire. Okay, so I don't have wheel spin there anymore. And I believe I would have saved some cost. Okay, we're dropping some costs down. That's just material cost, right? We have to drop a lot of material costs. Front brake low compared to grip. More braking issues. So why don't we increase this bias? Material cost. You know what, they're just gonna have to live with crappy brakes, I think. Brake force is low. Gotta drop that cost, guys. Can't keep having that cost way up there. does not change cost at all so we'll leave that as is no special items that increases our cost nothing special there nothing special here want to be in normal setting or comfy setting fun budget pony budget city budget muscle don't know why muscle wants it but Fun budget, pony budget, city budget. So that's, at least I'm in the budget markets now. Markets. So I want to be in the budget markets because that's going to have more people purchasing this. Okay, so now let's move ahead with this. And let's have a look now at what the money's going to end up doing to us. It's 
still. Profits still having large profits. Three years. Cut it to ten years. After five years, I'll make 2.5 million. Yeah, that doesn't quite seem right, does it? We are just not going to make any money on this car, I don't think. What could we do to get us to make more money? I'm not sure. You know what? Let's just sign off on this car. Okay. And now we get to do our sports car. Yeah, this one's going to be the uh, big money maker. It's not going to make any money. It's probably going to bankrupt the company. Oh, what should we call sports car? Choices. All the hard choices. Oh, hmm. Let's just go with like some sort of typical ZFR. I don't know what it stands for, but it's just going to be the ZFR. We are going to look for a mid-engine car for us, because that's what we want. No, we don't want that one that I clicked on. Okay, so we'll, we'll try using that one. I mean, these ones are looking pretty cool, but I don't want it to be front-engine. I want it to be mid-engine car. So we're going to do it for a ZFR. We're going to start with this guy here. We could go with aluminum, space age frame, galvanized steel, mid longitudinal, and we want um, mm, we want double wishbone in the front, double wishbone in the back. It's a sports car. Oh, we're going all out on this one. Okay, we'll move forward with this one. Select an engine, and you need the monster engine in this guy. Now we have to edit the trim. Want this body on there. Leak that back. You want a oh, small cabin. Yeah, we'll probably push the wheels out. Push everything nice and low. It's not really a very well shaped mid engine car, though. But we're going to go with that paint. Do we stick with the midnight blue? We do high flake red, deep red. Like a, like a root beer brownie kind of color. But it's not really root beer, but flaky brown. Or do we go with racing yellow with no flake? That's a little bit too yellowy. Okay, we're going to go with this one and call it Racing Yellow. Current engine does not fit. Decrease the engine size or use another engine. Well, what do I have to do to make it fit? Okay. 
Okay. Glad I saw that now. We gotta go back then. Trim and body. No, see, it's not gonna work. Okay, so. We're gonna use the monster. We're gonna have to change. Uh, delete contents. Edit trim. It's gonna make me select everything first, isn't it? Okay, there seems to be a bit of a issue here. Okay. Clear engine slot. Edit trim won't let me select the engine we'll select the monster again pick the trim and it comes right back to here and I'm stuck in the same problem okay how do I change where the engine is positioned because so it won't let me get through here okay so what I'm gonna have to do I'm gonna have to delete this you know what? Yes, we'll delete the ZF project and we'll just start the ZF project, ZFR project all over again. ZFR. Ooh. We are going to be going for a super. Let's see what it'll give us. Do, 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 do. I think I got it stuck. Base frame aluminum, mid transverse, double wishbone. Delete that engine. See, I don't want your stupid three liter iron block here, V8. I want my V12. Let's see, what do you have in here? What an ugly car. Sorry, nope. Not doing that again. Yes, delete the project. Okay, moving forward again with the same project. That FR. Okay. Modify. We want the ZFR then. We have to find one that's also mid that can com actually fit something in it. Okay, so you can be mid-engined. But how dumb will you look? We'll look probably pretty dumb. No, I didn't want it. Nope. No. Now it's locked into it, so now I have to delete it again. Okay. We'll add... Maybe this might be the last time we try to build the ZFR? I don't know. Okay. Do we just go with this and go front-engined with it? I might, but I kind of, and then transform it into a mid-engine. Okay, let's go with this. It looks pretty cool and sleek. Okay, so we want aluminum, space age, galvanized steel, front longitudinal, double wishbone, double wishbone. Okay. We'll move forward with this one. Select existing engine. We want the monster in here. Okay, so now trim. Does this engine fit? Convertible, convertible. Now uh, we want the coupe. It actually is a pretty sleek body shape. Paint.
paint. We still want our racing yellow. How do I pick my racing yellow? Apply paint. Own paint? No. Delete that one. Oh, was I just painting the wheels or something? All body panels. On car. Global. Default. On car. I want this paint. Edit it. So, okay, I don't know why it's not putting it on the car. Apply to slot. Okay, there we go. Racing yellow. Engine bay is quite full. Resulting in elevated service costs. Consider using a smaller engine. Hell no. We want the big engine. Headlights. What kind of headlights are we going to throw on this bad boy? I mean, it looks like it's already got two spots that I just... I have to fill with the proper light. Where did it go? I mean, how could you not put those lights in there already? Actually, they look pretty dumb. <laughs> okay, maybe shrink them in size a little bit. They just look dumb because they're not like... They don't look like they're molded to the body. That's a little bit better. I didn't change anything, but... Tail lights. What are we going to do on these guys? I think we're going to do a vertical light. Yeah. We're going to want to put them out here, but then we're going to want to turn them. How far can I turn them? Can I do 90? Yes. But now we want to kind of increase them in length only. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm a game for that. Indicators. On the front. What do we want on the front? these guys can look like. Nope, they have to be deleted. You have to be deleted. I don't want to use the ones I used before though. Let's see if we can put these ones on. But we want to rotate them and again 90. Okay. Not quite beautiful, but we're working on it. And I saw the Aston Martin grill is shaped down here, which I probably want to go with. I don't want to go with Lexus or Cadillac shaped. I think I'm going to go with this honeycomb. And you always have to have a nice big mouth. Actually, we'll undo both of those size adjustments. Okay. I'm okay with that. It's a very square front end, but we'll deal with that. Let's see how cramped the engine is. Take off the hood. And we gotta turn the engine on. Oh, I won't show it. Why well, won't it show my engine in there? Come on, I want to see it. I guess we'll turn this back on. Okay. Do we want to put any vents? I think we definitely want to put some of these vents on the hood. 
near the back. We want to make them nice and long. Yeah. Some hood vents. And then we kind of want to put a vent right in front of the wind screen. Or do we want to do some of these side vents? Can we throw a side vent in here? So I'm just going to look dumb. That's just going to look dumb. But a fender vent. Is that going to look cool? Oh. We want to shorten it up. Make it tall. Taller. Rotate it a bit. Rotate it a bit more. Want to get it in there between the door and the rear wheel. But I don't think we want to disrupt that body line. The throat on the other side too? It does. Perfect. Okay. A little vent in there. But I think I still do want some fender vents. Alright, can we throw a nice fender vent? I think this is going to be the best looking fender vents we're going to have here. Why won't it let me select them on the car? Okay, maybe we don't have fender vents. No, we'll just, we won't have fender vents then. Oh, a scoop. Do we want to have a scoop? I don't know how these look, so. That already looks dumb. We just won't have scoops. Sunroof. Um, sure, let's put a sunroof in here. It's got to be nice and big. Yeah, okay. I'm liking the way this guy's looking. Events lip. Do we need a lip of some sort? Oh, you're way out of place. got to figure out how to properly place it. You know what? Forget it. No lip. Boiler? Or do we go with a wing? I think this body style demands not to have a wing though. I think I want to try and pull this. Nope. 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 Undo. I want to pull this down. Nope. Okay. I think we just gotta live with that bubble. Fixture. Those are some crazy wings. Fuel cap. Gotta stand out. We can have a center. No. Doesn't want to sit nice on the side of the fender though. On your quarter. No. No, see that just looks dumb. That looks dumb.
Yeah, we'll put one right up here. Okay. That looks a little bit better. Except for it's like off. We want it to kind of be up here and keep it square. Square ish. Okay. That will work just fine. No spoiler, no wing. Bill cap door handle. What kind of door handle do we want to go with? Gotta be somewhat sleek, I would think. Supposed to be a premium car, so. Let's try and see what this one will look like. Not terrible. Okay, we'll go with that. Mirrors. Where's my round mirrors? For whatever reason, you always have to put them on this side of the car. We're gonna put them like the Datsun 240 style. We're gonna put them way out here. Over top of your front wheels. That way you can see behind you just looking forward. Yeah. Nope. Nope, changing my mind already. What kind of mirror? Chrome guys? Little small curl mirrors? Well, whatever reason, if you don't put them on the right hand side, they go backwards, so. Sure, and parts from the Mundelo. Okay, we'll go with that mirror. Antenna. We'll go with the little shark fin. We'll bring the shark fin to style. Right in the middle. Number plate again. Only need a rear number plate. You want to keep her low. Ooh, that's actually kind of shitty. We're going to have to put it up here. And then we're going to have to make sure it's centered. Yeah. It was too deep last time. No bumpers. We just need our badge on the car. And the two places that our badge goes. Make it big. So people know. And throw the badge in the front. Then they know what car it is. Oh, that's a big badge. Big bad badge. Wheels. Now these have to be some cool looking wheels. Which I guess they just don't make. Okay, let's give this guy some exhaust, and we're going to go for some dual exhaust, and we're going to put it coming out of the body. Now let's zoom in here a little bit more. We want it coming out like mid, or lower, or upper, or right in the middle. Okay, we're going to do just even with the bottom of the tail lights oh ho, 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 those are some big tips is there a copy function let's see mirror hey that works out perfect I like it those are some big meaty tips I think that'll fill out the back end a little bit more I like it Okay, miscellaneous features. Um, hmm. Well, it's not turboed, so we can't really put turboed. But let's try putting this in here. One Z. And then we need 
R F. Oh, oh, okay, that was a mistake. Keep the Z, and then we have to pop in the F, and we'll rearrange the how it's orientated here. Just make sure that it's pretty much square with one another. That FR. That way people know what model it is. Maybe we'll change the name in the future. Badging miscellaneous features. We'll go back and see if there's anything else we want to put in here. It's not 4x4 so we can't put that in there. Mm, I think we're going to stay away from all of these for now at least. I think the chrome sits nice on the yellow. Oh, do we want to give it some... Uh, We'll just back out here real quick. But I think maybe to give it some hood latches. To hold down the hood here. So it's definitely a flip forward hood, 100%. Let's see how that's going to look. Let's reset the camera. Zoom in. I think we just have to move it a little bit more here. Oh wait, these aren't hood. What do these actually look like? Oh, well, that looks kind of silly. Let's see if there's something better that'll look more like a hood pin. Mm, doesn't quite look like it. Would there be anywhere else in it? I don't think so. Okay, well, we'll just go with that. Um, is there windshield wipers to put on? I didn't see any. Ooh, we could go with some louvers on the back, but that's kind of muscle car-ish. We're going to stay away from that. Actually, these are windshield wipers right here, aren't they? Yes, they are. Oh, that is a big wiper. Wonder what changes with them. I wonder if it is just the... Let's see, what's this one going to look like? Am I too close? So now I want to spawn it on the car. Oh, um, I don't know where it put it, but it put it somewhere. Okay, those are significantly smaller. Oh, why does it put it there on the car? That is weird. See, why is it so big? I guess I can always bring it down, right? These don't really look like they vary very much at all. Okay, well, we're going to put one here. Just a central one? No, it's gonna one's gonna go here. And then we're definitely gonna have to bring its size down. Take this, and if we mirror this, what's it gonna look like? No, that's kinda dumb. Cancel. We need it to be a little bit more in here. Here, I believe. Make it size. And then put the same wiper on this side. Then we need to kind of just rotate it up and shrink its size down as well. And then move it a little bit more into here. I mean, I wish you could test to see what the arc was, but. I think uh, maybe we want to rotate them down a little bit or okay I'll deal with that I don't know what's going on with this really weird why it's so tall like that maybe that's just how they made it conform to the windshield who knows so now we got wipers on it 
Okay, is there anything else that we really need? I don't know. I think this might be the, uh... The starting look of the ZFR. Our hypercar that we're going to build. Okay, so we'll move forward with this at least. So far the only warning we have is the engine bay is too full, resulting in elevated service costs. Consider using a smaller engine. Nah. We don't want a smaller engine. Come on. Okay, so longitudinal rear wheel drive. That's one we want. Manual. And we're going with a four speed gearbox. Top speed. We're going to say 210 kilometers an hour, which is pretty fast for the 40s, I would say. So we can probably bring the spacing down. I mean, we've got no wheel spin, which is amazing. Um, we'll just leave it as an open diff. And I think we'll leave it there like that for now. Okay. Front tires are narrow. I can only do this one here. Only do cross ply, but we're going to be definitely going into a sports compound, which still says the front tires are narrow for the chosen tire compound and the load that they carry. Okay, let's try upping the rim size to a 16 and try upping the tire diameter and then we want to make it as wide as we can. Still too narrow. So what does it want me to do? If it's too narrow, rear tire width. Rim offset. We definitely want it to be flush with the car. That looks pretty good in the front. In the back. That doesn't look bad, but definitely I want to make these significantly wider. I don't know why it can only be that wide. I have to keep upping my tire diameter. Which is kind of saying that's the highest I can go. The highest tire diameter. And it just keeps dropping my... So I think we'll have to go down to maybe a 13. Yeah, there we go. Got some water tires. Now I have to fix my offset. 13 inch tires on it and just smash that width okay now we don't have that problem anymore but now let's just make sure our offset is still good so we poke a little bit in the front so maybe we'll see if we can pull the fenders out so let's go to the body and let's see if we can pull these front fenders out at all just changed things didn't it yeah it changed how I had we'll undo that can we grab the fender oh ho, ho. um yeah I'm def I'm gonna give this thing some hips yeah we're gonna fill those tires out real nice filling those wheel wells with so much rubber okay I think that looks pretty sweet, but let's get back into the wheels and now let's mess with our offsets. That's a massive offset. Okay, that's not bad. We've got this thing with some massive hips, which I think looks lovely. So maybe we can move this we go to the fixtures and just take the fuel cap and move it a little bit more down here so it's more like it's on the hip yeah more on the hip I like that better than being up in that crevice and those vents are just meaty 
All right. So, I think that's got the wheel widths worked out. Still don't have any issues except for the engine bay, and we're not going to be messing with that. That's how wide she's going to be. Because she's our sports car. I'll actually tuck this in a couple. Uh, one more. Okay. And then the back. Let's just make sure we're not being a little bit too pushy. No, that's inside. We'll leave that. Nice little look underneath. See all those mechanisms going. Look at that. I got tons of room with the engine in there. Come on. What's it talking about? Now let's pop the bonnet. Look at that. There's tons of room in there for that engine. It looks so lovely in there. Okay. On to brakes, which they're currently not saying that there's an issue. But let's make the size as big as we can. And then we're going to pump. I mean, the material cost, this car is going to be super expensive. I don't know if we're ever going to make money on this. Uh, 55. Yeah, okay. We'll go with that. We'll see if we have issues later. No under tray. Airflow. When do we have issues with the airflow? Same spot. 41, 42. So it's going to be less drag, which is good, but a fuel economy potential, higher top speed potential. Okay. So, but we could make it a little bit more reliable with that, but it's also a supercar in the 40s, so it doesn't have to be super reliable. Move forward. Seating. Nope. No, it's just, it's just a two-seater. Interior. Um... We'll probably make it a sporty interior with a premium AM radio. Oh, this car's gonna be super expensive. It's not even gonna be funny. Power steering, traction aids, all of these. Um, we'll go with some standard 40s safety. New drivability value 7.1. Oh, that's pretty low. Little economy liters per hundred kilometer is 42.9. Hmm. Maybe we have to do something about that. Tail cost is an expensive car. Convertible premium. Low drivability, low comfort potential. Okay, well, let's put this into sport. And then, oh, we got lots of issues here. The car has severe issues with wheel spin, significantly reducing drivability. Okay, so let's uh, let's go fix the wheel spin then. Oh, look at that, in pretty much every gear. So let's pull it down. Okay, so let's thrash the top speed way up there. Okay, first gear has a top speed of 285. I don't believe that. So let's leave it in there, but we gotta pull this top speed down to something that's a lot more reasonable for the time. Uh, we'll go for 250. We still have massive wheel spin. Hmm. I don't know why second gear has so much more wheel spin than first. Okay, that makes more sense. So let's just say there. Let's just try and move ourselves out of wheel spin. Okay. That's a bit ridiculous that your first gear will get you up to 196. But it's because the spacing is so small. But if I take the spacing up and then move this top speed up, but then still look at your first gear, that's just not realistic so let's go to three gears gearbox let's pull this top speed down like i think top speed around 250 is probably where reasonably i should be now let's see if i can get a spot in the spacing that makes sense i mean it's gonna be a pig like i don't know just it feels like it's not worked out 
Well, maybe if I do a manual diff, material costs will go up, production will go down, off-road will go way up, all oh, that's engineering times up. Let's do a manual. Let's see, open at 22.9, manual is still there. So it's not giving me any advantages. Oh, I didn't know that putting quality up makes it worse for what I have, but okay. Um, okay, so what's worse? Two speed? Three speed? Four speed? Four speed is obviously worse, but now let's try if we did four wheel drive. We still have massive wheel spin and four wheel drive? Well, I mean, it's okay with a 27%. Let's see when they say it's a problem. Because right now they're not even saying it's a problem. The wheel spin. Wheel spin is reducing car's drivability. Consider adjusting the gearing. Oh, I don't know. Something funky's happening here. Okay, so we're back there, and they're not saying that short gearing is reducing the car's top speed. Okay, well I don't know which one they want me to do here then. Let's just go until they say that I need to consider um, the wheel spin. Minor, minor issues with wheel spin slightly reducing drivability. Okay, so... Let's just see what people think now. I'm not getting a drivability penalty now. My drivability is definitely up. Uh, but now they want brakes to be better, correct? Front brake force is low, rear brake force is low. Rear dampers are hard, reducing drivability and comfort. Consider reducing dampener stiffness. How are they narrow? Like, I have them all the way up to 185. Like, how much wider do they want me to be? Okay, so... I guess what we can do... Is we can't make the tires any bigger. Make the rims bigger does not help me out at all. Put them on 12s. But my tire diameter didn't change, and just my rim diameter did. Why would I get more drivability issues with wheel spin? Okay, now I'm back to the exact same settings I was at before. Okay, there we go. So why can't I just make a wider tire? Maybe it's my compound. Semi-slicks. Let's just go semi-slicks and let's see what it's going to do for us. I mean, it's significantly more money, and max load, which ones have the biggest max load? So these ones all this have the same, but the hard long life is there. Then I'll get into se severe braking and wheel spin issues. Brakes suffer from brake fade, reducing durability and sportiness. Try increasing the brake size. They're already mad. Okay. I guess I can make them bigger. Make them bigger. And they don't like the sporty suspension. Rear is passive. Comfort. Normal. Sporty. The engine base quite full. The rear tires are narrow for the choosing tire compound. The load that they carry. Drivability testing. So... Interior, we're going to leave that alone. Aerodynamics. Let's increase brake airflow. To about three months timing. And that should help with the brake fade. Okay, so now it wants me to go with a sports compound instead of the semi-slicks.
And let's just throw this all the way up there. Okay, so if the front brake force is low compared to grip, the rear brake force is low compared to grip. The car has issues with wheel spin reducing drivability. Okay, so now if I go to medium compound. With wheel spin, front brake force is low compared to grip. Like, I don't know how they want me to fix... Like, the brakes are already all the way up in size, and pad type is already full. How am I supposed to get more braking power out of this? And now they still say that I have massive wheel spin issues. Okay, so now what am I going to do to get rid of this? Pump the top speed up. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we still don't have any wheel spin issues listed. We can keep pushing that up a little bit. Minor issues with wheel speed. Okay, now we don't have the wheel speed, so we'll go with this one. The brake force, I think we're just gonna have to go with it. Like, I don't know what else we can do for them. I don't want the semi-slicks. The brakes are already as big as they're going to allow me to make them. And they got the, the fastest pad type, which is just driving the cost way up. Like you can see how expensive this is. Rear grip. Front grip is massive up there. The front brake is down here. So I think I just have to go, or I could try and balance these out a little bit more. Put it more towards the front. I'll do 50-50, perfect braking. Front brake force is low, the rear brake force is low. How is this? Almost the exact same. Actually, we'll start sliding when we're going too fast there, so we gotta pull this back a little bit. Because we don't want to start sliding when we're braking. We don't want to lock them up on the back end, so we'll leave it at that. Can't do much about the these other ones here. Rear dampers are hard. See, now Luxury wants it, but Low comfort penalty is huge. Muscle. Okay, so I don't... I guess we could start with with muscle. But my, my drivability is terrible if that's supposed to be out of 100. Utility sucks. Practicality is low, but that's okay. Safety is there. Prestige is nothing. Comfort sucks. Sportiness. Like, I don't know what, if these are supposed to be out of 100 or, or what they're supposed to be. Value differentials. Percentage differential. Percentage difference bar graph drivability. Like, I, I don't know if that's low comfort penalty. So if I then take this suspension and go into normal instead. Drivability goes down, but comfort goes way up. So we can go with more comfort. So what's going to be the difference between our sport and normal? If we go into normal, we can pick up some more luxury and convertible premium. See, count penalties are taken there. So I could throw in the interior two plus two. And we'll get away from the seat penalties here. But I mean, that it increases our chances there. But I think we want to stay in the muscle premium.
still trying to understand what all of these things mean too. Um, big engine, lots of power. Yeah, you definitely have that. That's for sure. Acceleration's pretty good. Braking, steering, fast. So we can't steer once we go too fast. We're pretty much, uh, pretty much done. Just comfort, drivability factor, boardiness factor. So how does that change when I go to sport? Or normal, comfort. Race. <laughs> we pretty much drop pretty much all of that out. Stay with sport, I think. Um, we go with normal. Drivability decreases, but um, we get more market brands. Slightly reducing drivability. So let's look at the wheels here. Sorry, the drivetrain. What do we got here? Okay, so let's try knocking the spacing down one. It's not going to say that we have drivability issues anymore. Um, so that puts us up a little bit. New engine stats. I don't like I I wish I knew what these numbers were out of though. Emissions. A lot of emissions. <laughs> uh okay. You know what? I think we're gonna go ahead. Let's just see the markets. So we're completely out of all of these markets here. But we have convention or convertible performance premium, luxury, premium, they're interested. Incredible Luxury is interested, Muscle's interested, and Muscle Premium's interested. But I can't get into these guys here for a little bit, but I want to be on that forefront of them knowing. So I want to move and live in this area, this GT, GT performance. Okay. I think we're gonna... What's the test track here? Airfield. Automation. Um, yeah, how do we run this? Yeah, play that through. Let's see how this goes. Not sure what it's going to do here. Zero to 100 is 13.6 seconds. That's terrible. Because the acceleration is so bad. Because 80 to 120 is under 5. times 20 seconds <laughs> oh that sucks I have to fix the drivetrain I believe okay let's uh where's our stop button that's our stop button okay let's go into the drivetrain here and let's just increase the spacing until they're starting to say consider Fixing wheel spin. Car has issues with wheel spin. Then we can top up the top speed some. I don't know why gear two is getting thrashed with wheel spin when gear one should have more wheel spin than gear two. Right, that just doesn't, doesn't uh, make sense to me. 
Zero to 100 is there at 10 seconds. That's ridiculous. Now it's going to say massive wheel spin. Yes, yeah, severe wheel spin issues. Yep, so now we're getting into issues where our, our engine, I guess, is just too, too powerful. I guess we can try and detune that, but I don't think we're going to want to. Let's just throw that top speed way up there. And look at that, 0 to 100 is now 19 seconds. And even to do that is 9 seconds. So, I mean, that's... I think we're just in trouble here with this engine. Too powerful. And the, the 0 to 100 is terrible. 100% wheel spin. <laughs> you know what, I kind of just want to see it on the test track doing the uh, the 0 to 100. Let's just see what it does. It seems to handle it pretty well. issues though. Alright, here it goes down the big long straight. Let's see how fast it gets up to. say about um, the uh, there we go Ooh, that's taking a huge hit drivability now new performance index is way up there even though it's got massive wheel spin um, issues sport most been significantly recent cars drivability. Yeah, I, I get that, but it seems to be working. People like the performance values up there. Service cost is high. Fuel efficiency, that's not great. Missions are massive. Hmm. Well. Maybe we can hit that with a, uh, a future trim level update. See if we can fix it with anything. Wheel spin percentage. We're at 47%. Do I have it? Okay, no, I still have it in that, that gears. Hmm. Downforce, I will have to fix that at some point, but we don't have those just yet, so. Okay, well we're gonna we're gonna go with this, I think. I think it looks quite nice. Paint's quite nice. I mean we might be able to do some other features on there somewhere, but drive line, wheels, I think we got that all figured out to an extent. As big as we can make it, right? So as we get more technology. We'll start fixing the issues with the ZFR. 
And who knows, maybe it'll be a long time running model, maybe it will uh, it'll drop out. Severe wheel spin. Let's go ahead with it. Muscle. Going for the muscle. Okay, go forward with it. I think I need a new factory for it though. Okay, so we want to be in here. Pretty much having our whole base in there. I think small is where we can fit this. Go with a small plant. It's working on it. There it is. So I need a galvanization plant. Carbon plant leatherworks. No mass production. Add-ons galvanization. Okay, so I guess... How do I make this cannot be produced? No mass production. Okay, so essentially I'm having issues with saying that this car cannot be mass produced, but it's that's kind of also the target market I'm going with, trying to keep it like some sort of supercar type of deal to start. So I think this is okay. I'm not entirely sure, but we'll sign off on it and we'll see what ends up happening. We got factory, two is small, factory one is medium. I have a feeling this is gonna fail, but who cares? We'll go with it. Yeah, sign off on everything. Like, we're not even close to making money on this car, are we? Oh wow, 16K? The zinger. Yeah, no, that's not going to work for us, is it? Okay. Oh, well, you know what? We will, uh... We'll just go forward with it. We're just learning this anyway, so... Sign off. Oh, I don't know what Family One is. Um, agree. This one we don't want to do that. Engine projects, family one. We'll delete this one. Okay. So the ZFR is not going to come out till fifty-one. Car projects. Um, how do I tie a project in? That's what I want to try and do. Engine projects. How long will you take? Open project. But tell me how long it's gonna take. No. Okay. Well then let's just go back. Sign off. Factory manager. Demographic size. Market awareness is nobody. Okay, so loan size. Maybe we'll take a loan out later. Okay, so now we're playing. It's going forward. I'm spending all my money. Competitor releases three new cars this month. Probably not great. But now, uh, well, we won't launch until 48 anyway. So why don't we just speed up the time here? And we'll fly right into the car launch. Spending all my money. Okay, so we'll pause it right here. Zero taxes have been paid. We'll run this forward a little bit slower. Okay, so we've launched Mandelo, it looks like. And so far, profits are terrible. We spent lots of money. Uh, where 
Where do we get some sort of uh, run on this? So this is months until parts unlocked. So it looks like I have some more parts unlocked. Maybe. But let's just go to the f 1950. We'll just see. So I don't know if anybody's even buying my car. What does this mean? Target demographic score. Mu muscle. Okay, it's 150 here. Months of stock, zero. Factory shifts, 2.3. Last month's sales, zero. Yeah, I think that was a big flop, wasn't it? Okay, so... That did not work out at all. Okay. Um, I guess I might have to put some marketing in there. Uh, let's just go back. So monthly sales, zero. Demographic size. See, we, we're completely outside of the family utility. So I think we're going to have to get into that to see if we can make some money. But, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know why I'm not selling any of those. Let's see. Open project. It's a base trim. Muscle. I don't know what I'm missing. Okay, let's go back. Just check that off, sure. Factory manager. Modify factory, create new empty factory configuration. She wanted to create a new factory configuration, modifying the factory configuration for car factory one. We'll remove the tooling for the current face slip on Deo 00. Currently, factories can only be tooled when a facelift is first designed. Are you sure you wish to continue? Disagree. Okay, let's let's understand this a little bit better. Staff members, production unit output. So we're supposed to get two hundred eighty-eight thousand in a year. Automation. Production units per worker per day. Factory efficiency. Okay, so what are you actually building? I don't know what it's actually, it should be building the Mondello. Engine, Tiger Eco, number of shifts. Staff member is zero. So why is the engine factory have zero? Production unit output. Zero. So why am I not making any engines? Car projects. Open project. Edit engine project. Okay. Why am I not making any engines? Okay, not see that this is stuffed into this car. Yeah, I don't think this worked out very well. Okay, why? Oh, you know what? Just for learning purposes, let's just fly forward and see what happens when the ZF launches. I think the engines were tied. That's what I think happened. I think the two engines were tied together. So as soon as my ZFR engine, my, my V12 was done, then I think the um, the base got its engine out there. Because now I'm actually getting sales. 
monthly sales. Seems like everybody's buying it. Market awareness. They're there. They know of me a little bit. Okay. I think that's what that means. Total sales to demographic. Why would off-roaders buy my car? I don't get that. Okay, so let's just run this forward still. And let's just see what we can get to once the ZF releases. ZFR. Okay. No sales for that one yet. I'm not sure. Is that the lifespan? I think. I think that's the lifespan of the vehicle. So if I go forward just slowly. No sales there. Open project. Um, add a facelift? No, we don't want to do any of that. One competitor. New car came out. Zero taxes have been paid. Why am I not paying taxes? Is it because I'm losing money? I don't fully understand everything that's going on here. Doesn't seem like a single person has bought the ZF, which in a way kind of makes sense because it's a difficult car to sell. It's very expensive. Okay, so now how, if I go monthly sales, I've got a couple sales over here. Okay, so they're buying that up. Market awareness. Overall, it looks like majority of people somewhat know what's going on. See, the problem is I'm like luxury pr uh, premium is really where I had to get my. That's where the that's the only people that can afford it really. The rest of the people can't afford ZFR. Let's just fly forward a couple more years and let's just see. guess that's my spending. Looks like I'm not really making money or losing money. I'm kind of just staying status quo. Oh, well that's kind of good. Let's just fly this. Oh, it can go way up there. Yeah, let's just blow all my money on this and see what happens. Even the body, and chassis, drive line, wheels. Oh wait, hold on. I'm I didn't pay attention to how many billions I'm spending. I'm spending lots and lots of money. My research costs are through the roof. Let's drop the exhaust down. Maybe we just stay with plus five to start. Go plus five everywhere. Current level. Okay, so we definitely need some wheels and brakes to fix our car issues. Uh, yeah, okay, we'll leave that for now. Take out bank loan? Oh no thanks. Let's just let it go. Nobody has bought a ZF yet and my sales are somewhat declining. Ooh, hold on. There they are. Now people are buying it and I've lost money, which makes sense. A 
Okay. I'm not entirely sure what's all gone on. I don't know if this is... Like, it says last month's sales, but it doesn't really, like, have any kind of, like, stats for, um, like, overall sales, highest in the market, anything like that, at least that I've been able to see. I mean, maybe this, some of the features that will come later will have that, um, but yeah, that's, uh, I think this is where I'm going to call it quits for this episode. It's going to be a bit of a longer one, but oh well, that's, that's, uh, if you stayed, thanks for staying. Um, probably going to continue this off screen just to try and learn some more and maybe I'll do another one in the future. Who knows? But, uh, thanks for watching guys and we'll see you in the next one.